Hello. Hooray. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let's see. Let's wait a second till we get some eyeballs in here. Excellent. Will it pop up the same way that Facebook does? Mm hmm. Yeah. Excellent. I know we've got lots of excited people looking to join us this afternoon or maybe on replay. I'm starting to see them pop in. Oh, and here come the comments. Yay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So glad you're here. Oh, Darlene is here. Darlene is why my team lead. She's actually downstairs. So oh. <laughs> in the building, <laughs> in the building, she's in the building. So welcome, nice. everyone. Oh, there we go. There we go. we got people joining in. Yes, you could absolutely watch or you can craft along with us. I'm excited to, you know, have five minutes of craft time today. Mm -hmm. It has been a super crazy weekend and super crazy day. So um, having five minutes, half an hour, however long we're going to be today uh, is exciting, is exciting. Yay. So um as you ladies are tuning in, if you don't know this lady, oh, wrong way, this way. <laughs> it's always backwards on the camera here. Yes. Uh, this is Libby Hickson from Hero Arts, and she has very graciously agreed to give up her afternoon or a little bit of her afternoon to craft with us. Uh, when I first started speaking to Libby, uh, I was just, I was intrigued by the whole looking glass line of dyes. And she's taught me a few things in some of our retailer trade shows that we've done. And uh, I said, is there any chance you would come give us a little virtual visit and show us something with the looking glass dies? And she said, absolutely. So we are thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to have Libby with us today. She's got beautiful sunshine, just like we do here. Now she's down, you're in Atlanta, right, Libby? Yep, just north of Atlanta. Wow. Nice and warm down there today. Yes, surprisingly warm. I went out to walk the dog earlier and I was like, wow, this is a nice day today. <laughs> so, I don't know if I should tell my Canadian friends that, but <laughs> well, you know what? We're hitting we're hitting springtime. So at least the sun is shining and it's getting a little warmer every day. So yeah. <laughs> looks like we've got lots of eyeballs on here. So I think I'm just gonna turn it over to Libby. Uh, okay. we are watching the comments and we see lots of wonderful people joining us today, but I'm gonna I'm gonna mute my microphone unless I think something witty and smart to say. And <laughs> uh, we will let Libby run the show. So take it away, Libby. All right. So hello everybody. As Sherry said, I work for Hero Arts. I'm the uh, marketing and education director at Hero Arts, and I'm so excited to be here on this wonderful stores page to do a demo. And we're gonna talk about looking glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my um, desktop into this, into the um, into view here. I'm gonna change my view. So just hold on as I switch things around. <laughs> All right, there we go. So what we're gonna talk about today are the looking glass dies from Hero Arts. This is one of the many examples. We have so many of these now and they're so cute. They build this little uh, about two and a quarter inch um, scene on your card front and you build up the layers. So you can see this is the one we're gonna work with today. We were kind of um, inspired to use sunflowers with everything going on in the world. And I'm gonna make a support, a card of support using sunflowers. But you can see how this works. There's the three layers of the die. In this case, you build the leaves, the flowers, and the little bee. And this one is called um, Looking Glass Bee and Flowers. And I think I'm just gonna show several of the other ones before we get started, just so you have an idea of what these products are like. I'm probably gonna show you one Sherry doesn't have right now. She has some of them, but not all of them. But if you love one, I'm sure if you tell her, she will help you out with that. And then once I show all those, I'm gonna build this card on our live today. And Sherry's gonna make it along with me. So that'll be fun. That's right. right. So we, we do have uh, an order pending with Hero. So if we need to add on to any of those with your special orders, we're more than happy to do so. Great. I'm going to move my little computer out of the way and grab my little stack here. So one thing we are going to use on our card today is this set, which is called Basic Frames. So it's fun to make your little looking glass um, look like it has a frame around it. And this is one of the shapes that we have for that. I've also used these um, as stencils to add little backgrounds to my um, card. You can just die cut it and use that circle or square. You can use the piece that comes out, the circle or square on your card as well. So lots of things you can do with that along with framing your looking glass. And then we have two other frames that came out in our re latest release for the looking glass as well. This is the ornate frame and this is the fine art frame. I do have to cheat and look at the back. I don't always remember all the names <laughs> off the top of my head, but these are cute to make it look like it's a real framed piece of art on your card. 
Um, this is one of my absolute favorites from this release, which is Bird on a Branch. And um, I did make a card. I don't know if you were in my class at the, this trade show, Sherry. Yep, she was. Um, we made this in class with the Bird on the Branch. And you can see that frame that I just showed as well, framing the little scene. We you actually have that out in the store. So if anyone wants to see it live, they can just All pop right. into the store and see it. So you can see how that comes together. In this case, we cut it out from um, plain cardstock and then colored it. But you could also do it with layers of just um, cardstock without having to do all that coloring. You can color on them with whatever you love to color with. I've done watercolor ones. I've done pencils. I've done markers. So just however you like to build your little scene. And it's not a lot of coloring you have to do. So it's pretty quick and easy, even if you're doing the coloring. All right. Next, we have this uh, birthday party, which is a lot of fun. This one, I don't, every time I do this on a live, I see it's upside down and then I don't remember to fix it after, but this layer is upside down in my package for whatever reason. But you can see how this makes this cute little birthday party scene with the banners and some cards with this. I'm going to just pull out these cards and show you as I go. Well, the thing I like about looking glass too is that you don't necessarily have to use all three together as well. If you just like one of them, you could just use one of them. For sure. And, and this one in particular, if you wanted to do a um, slimline card and have three little windows going across your card, I'll show something like that in a second. You could have the banners on each side and then have the birthday cake in the middle. So a really fun way to use that. And um, here's another one where it was just using glitter paper for the banners, which is really fun and simple and quick, but so cute. We also have our lily pond. You can see ooh, how it has the pads, the flowers, and then has the little um, a dragonfly. Yeah, I should have had these in order. And this one is similar to the bird one I showed. It has that same frame and it's colored, but it just looks so pretty. There were also hot air balloons. Sorry, guys. I'm going to, I think at the end, I'll go through all these cards because there's a lot of fun samples to show you. I just wanted to give you a feel for how these look and how they come together. So that's the looking glass hot air balloons. You can see how cute that is with a little rainbow in the background. And then it just goes on and on. And I wanted to show you also that we can do it as a, a trifle, and not a trifle, the slimline card. Here's an example of a, and this is what we were talking about too. If you didn't want to have all the layers up on top of each other, this is the Paris looking glass. And you can see how she used all of it in the center, but then just did the trees on both sides. So really fun way to do that as well. And we also had in that same release some windmill tulips and here just repeating the same one on all sides. So we've also had Canyon lands, day or night, which is great for adding just like some stars or sunshine or clouds to your little scene. So you can mi mix and match these fun dyes. There's also rain and clouds, more clouds and some rain. We had a winter release that had winter forest, which I love this little deer set. I think it's so cute. Um, ornaments, snowflakes, peace, love, and joy words. So you could mix and match and add some of these words to the different, um, especially if you're doing the slim line. And then we're back to our frames. So that's just a kind of an overview of all the things that we've had in this line. We also have a couple stencils that make it easy to either um, ink blend your backgrounds or line up. I'll show you how I line up when I'm die cutting. If I wanted to get the die in the same place on each layer, I'll show you that in a minute. But today we're going to use this um, to just uh, do some ink blending on our background. I just want to show you there's two versions of it. And Libby, is there plans to keep the looking glass lines going, like new releases and that kind of thing? I'm pretty sure because it's been pretty popular. So until Good. until people stop loving it, I think it'll keep going because it's really fun. All kinds of scenes we can build. I also just wanted to show that if there are any woodblock lovers out there, we also have this fun woodblock stamp that you could build your little scene right on the on that woodblock and make it look like it's on an easel. All right. So like I mentioned, this is the card we're going to make today. We're going to use the be in flower with looking glass. We're also going to use the alignment stencil. Now mine looks really grungy, but I did that on purpose because I found that these little etched lines that are on the, the stencil, and that's how you line it up, were a little hard for me to see with my not so great eyesight. And so I just took my black ink and just blended it into those lines and then wiped it clean-ish, clean-ish, <laughs> so that I could see those lines easier. So that's just a little tip on that. If you have one, I, I only recently did this. I didn't even realize I've just been struggling with it for almost a year. And then I realized I can put something in those lines and make it easier to see. So that's why mine looks like that. 
So to make our card, I'm going to have a piece of blue cardstock. And then um, what we're going to do, Sherry, is take a piece of white cardstock and write it, uh, write it, cut it into little two and a half inch squares. And that's how we're going to do our die cutting by lining up our looking glass dies right on the two and a half inch squares. And right before this started, I found my dies that I had misplaced and now I can't find them again. What is wrong with my brain today? I don't know. I see, I put them back in the package. That's why. This is how I store mine. So I just put it back in the package. How um, big was the blue Libby? Is it four by five and a quarter? Yes. Uh, no, it's actually five. It's A2. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. But actually, yeah, but I will end up trimming it down. So if you already have yours trimmed down, that's totally fine. Okay. So you want the blue four and a quarter by five and a half. Yeah. Okay. Just because uh, then it lines up easier with the lines on the stencil. But we're eventually going to get down to four by five and a quarter. Does Hero Art sell that woodblock easel stamp? Yes, that is a Hero Art stamp. And um, I'm not sure if Sherry, sell, I don't know if you carry any woodblock at all, but. We don't have any woodblock, wood but I'd be happy to bring it in for you, Margaret, if you want us to. Just send me an email. The best way to request things is to send an email to customer service at craftersworkshop.ca, and then we will get those added to our order. Okay, there you go. Now for lining up our blue panel, we'll just start with that and get our little ink blending done on our panel to begin with. So I have my A2 panel, my five and a half by four and a quarter, and I'm gonna line it up on these lines that say A2. So I look through my stencil to line it up. And there are some A6 lines on here as well, if that's a card size you ever use. And it also has the um, lines in both directions so you can make your card portrait or landscape. And then I just um, tape the back of my cardstock to the back of the stencil. That way, if it rips at all, when I take off the washi tape, it's not going to rip my card front that I care more about. And that's how I hold that in place. Of course, um, if you had a, what's the stuff, Sherry, that you could spray on it, if you have pixie spray or something like that to keep your stencil in, in place or use a station or any of the various things you could do. And then I'm using a dark blue ink. Um, this is our Hero Arts Blue Hawaii ink, but any blue ink would be just fine, whatever color you want your sky to be. And I'm going to take a blending brush. You could use a foam blending tool, however you like to blend your ink, and just do that right into the square of my stencil. And that's going to build the base of my scene. And I get quiet when I'm focusing on my ink blending. <laughs> and I just do it until I have as much coverage as I want on my little scene here. If you are new to ink blending at all, typically when I'm doing it, um, I kind of tap off a little and then I start from off of my area I'm blending onto and then blend onto it. I don't want to just start with full ink on my thing right in the center because that could leave a mark that I wouldn't love. And so I kind of go from the side and then onto the area that I'm blending. All right, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put this ink away, take off my stencil, and I'm going to clean off my stencil real quick because I'm going to show you another thing that you can do with a stencil in just a bit. Get my baby wipes here. So are most of you who are tuning in um, local to uh, Paper Crafters Workshop, do you, are you in the area or is anybody joining from farther away? I'm just curious. Or if you're too busy making along with us to reply to me, that's okay too. <laughs> Let me dry this off real quick too. We're, we're very fortunate to have people from all across the country. So That's amazing. Yeah. And I did see Rebecca in here from Make It By Yes, Marco. I saw nice Rebecca to too. <laughs> so we've got some local ladies tuning in as well as some distance ladies. And then there's Donna, who is just 10 minutes away. Uh, and sometimes that's a good thing. And she says sometimes that's not so good thing. But uh, Shopping is super easy for Donna. Huh? It's very easy. But we're, we're very fortunate to have some great support. St. Catharines, Brampton. I grew up in Michigan. So I, was, I grew up very close to Ontario, but not quite. <laughs> 
All right. So now when I do my um, die cutting, oh, there's Karen. Hi, Karen Talucky. Nice to see you from Connecticut. Um, when I do my die cutting, I'm going to take my little square die and just line it up, eyeball it, doesn't have to be perfect, in the center-ish of my square that I cut out. And again, that's a two and a half inch square of white cardstock. I just put a little washi tape down to hold it in place when I die cut. And I'm putting it, um, where I'm putting it, again, it won't rip because this is going to be the negative part of the die cut that I don't need. So I don't worry about that. I'm gonna do the same with all three. I can run them on my plates of my um, die cutting machine all together. So I'm just gonna line them all up at once and then run it through one time. And then after I get this cut, I'm gonna show you what I would do with those that um, alignment stencil if I wanted to do them all into full panels instead of cutting these little squares to begin with. And then my little B. Grab my plates here of my machine. And then my die cutting machine is just right off to the side here. I'm going to run it through. I'm sorry if I'm shaking the whole place. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna just pop this off, take my tape off. I usually keep my tape to use a few times. Might as well, right? There's my B layer. And it's pretty forgiving, isn't it, Libby, that even if you're not perfectly centered, Oh, for sure. Especially when we're putting the frame around it, the frame is going to hide anything that's a little wonky if there is anything wonky. So that's why I love those frames. They create such a nice border around my looking glass. Okay. Now what I'm going to do with this, in this case, I'm going to do some Copic coloring, but any kind of markers you have, pencils, whatever you like to color with would be completely fine. These are the colors that I happen to be using on this card. Uh, no, that is not the right bin. <laughs> like there's no purple on my B. What is that? <laughs> Let me switch that out. <clears throat> I'm, I'm coloring, I'm creating at, um, Crap and Create event, Delivered event this weekend, and I pulled out my markers for that instead. <laughs> a, a lot of our community will be uh, likely participating on the weekend because uh, Scrapbook and Cards today is just up the street from us. So oh, that's so cool. It's a, it. very much a big part of our community. So Love it. Yeah, I was surprised to see you in the group, but that was great that I did see you in there. I'm like, yay, Sherry. Um, okay, so these are the colors that I'm using. There's three different or four different yellows, but it's because I do kind of a a darker yellow combo on the B and then a, a lighter one on the sunflower. Any two yellows or however, you know, you don't even have to blend if you don't want to. You could just use a solid yellow and that'd be totally fine. Um, I have a couple browns for the centers. I have a blue that I put on just the wings of the B. And then I used an N8, a dark gray for the black on the B. But that's, you know, I, I just pulled things like, I, you know, there's lots and lots of color combos and things you could do for your coloring. And so I'm going to start with my leaves and just color them green. Sorry, Libby, what color are you using there? This is the YG23. And I don't care about, you know, the edges because, again, those edges are going to be covered up and layered. So I'm just, you know, coloring my leaves and then just going up on the edge and not worrying too much about that part. And again, I get quiet while I'm coloring. I forget I'm live. I need to keep talking. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't think there are many more things that are more relaxing than coloring. For sure. Then I'm going to take my YG25, just a little bit darker green, and go over the, the lines that are in the die cut. I use that as my guide for adding a little bit of darker to my, my um, kind of the veins of my leaves.
So I am curious if any of you are making along with us. Um, it's totally okay if you're not. It's great to just sit and watch and chat with us and maybe see some ideas for making a card like this later. But I'm curious if anybody is making along with us. And you'll see, just to get your bearings on what we're doing here, this will be my first layer, and it's just going to go right over that blue square that we created. And we're going to layer up from there. And I'm going to use my two yellows, my Y15 and Y18 or what I pulled. Margaret's watching. Okay. <laughs> And if you if you That's are creating, or even if you cr go back and create on replay, make sure you post in our paper crafts inner circle group, because we love to see our creations and uh, get ideas from what you did, maybe a little bit differently, whether on purpose or out of necessity. <laughs> Indeed. So I'm taking my Y15 and coloring the sunflower. The, the yellow part of the sunflower. And then the Y18 is going to be, again, I just follow the guides on the, on the die cut. This is not super worrying about perfect shading. I'm just putting some color down. I'm sure some of you are much better colorists than I am, and that's great. You could add all kinds of depth and color to your sunflowers. But I'm just following the lines of the die cut. It's nice to have those guides to follow as well. Right. Makes it so easy. Right. So that's just where I am with that. Pretty simple coloring. Now I'll take my browns. I have again E57 and E59 for my two that I'm using. Kind of just tracing along that circle. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of the darker brown um, kind of to the border of it um, and leaving a little bit of the lighter in the center. I'll show you as I do it. So I'm coming in with the E59, the darker one. I'm just going to add some up here and then all around the back, I guess the corner of the square is what I should say. That's how I'm doing it. And adding and then leaving it a little lighter brown in the center. Okay. Ooh, when, Wendy's using Paris and reef looking glass dies. I love it. So you've known about our dies. <laughs> so you can see how that's coming along. I'm going to, I actually still have to trim my panel as well, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm going to get to my B next. And on this B, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the corners of his wings and then um, use the yellows and blacks on his body. So the yellows I picked out are uh, Y35 and Y38. Okay. This little face is yellow. And then just along, kind of along the edges, I'm putting the darker orangey yellow. And then the blue, which I did, BG53. Um, I'm, again, just kind of following the lines of the die cut. All right. 
And then finally the dark gray, I'm using an N8. You could use a black, you could use a, any other kind of dark gray. And I want it to look kind of fuzzy. So I'm trying to not make it all just an even layer of black. To try to make them look like a fuzzy bee. I don't know, I guess honeybees aren't necessarily fuzzy, but that was my thinking when I did it. <laughs> He's a bumble honeybee. <laughs> okay. Then his little legs. His little antenna. And that's it. So that's how he's looking. Now, um, one thing that I found, um, especially I'm coloring on this dark surface, I want to kind of hold it up. And if there's anything that's going to show kind of white on the sides, I want to make sure that I colored all that really well. So it doesn't, you don't see a, a white border. And I also found, this is not necessary by any means, but I like to take the, the dark marker and just color this frame just so if it does show it all, it's, it kind of blends in more with the dark than having it be a, um, a bit of white showing, if that makes sense at all. So that's just on the top layer? Um, on all of them, actually. Oh, on all of them? Okay. Yeah. It's probably not even necessary, but it's just, I don't know, just something I was doing. And kind of going in the inner part to make sure there's not a white edge on it. Because if you look on this, you can kind of see in, you know, it, it's dark instead of just being white. It looks more like a shadow to me. But And it doesn't have to be where the flower is because the edge of that is going to look yellow already. Okay, I'll do my leaf layer real quick. Oops. All right. So those are my little layers that we made for our looking glass. Get this out of the way. So the next thing I'll do is I'll build this up and I like to use my liquid glue when I'm putting these down. Actually, I see a little bit more that I wanna go over with this marker on the edge. Um, I'm putting the leaves with the, the three leaves at the top. I'm putting the smaller sunflower and I'll, you know, it's easier to build these once I have glue down so that the ones below don't move on me. I just wanted to show you kind of how it's going to come together. And then the bees, the bee layers next. Um, I just put them flat together with liquid glue. If you wanted to, you could do um, foam tape in between and really have it pop up. Um, another fun thing that you can do with these is create a little shaker card. I may even have a bee shaker here. Let me look real quick. Yes, I do. I think this might be one that you put on the little graphic for our live today, maybe. But you can see they made a little shaker with sequins in there. So that's another really fun thing you can do with that. All right. <clears throat> um, we're going to cut our frame, which is from the um, little circle and square frame set out of gold cardstock. Or if you don't have gold stock cardstock, you do whatever color you want. You can color it with Copics to make it look gold. But um, that's going to go around here. But before that, before I finish that part, I'm going to take a pause for a second. And I want to show you how you would use the alignment tool stencil if you wanted to cut full layers of each layer of looking glass, <laughs> if that makes sense. So what you would do, the same way we lined it up for doing the, um, the blue layer, I just watch my lines and put it on there. But this time I'm not gluing it to the paper taping it to the paper. I'm going to set it down on my tabletop. I'm going to take one of my dies and I'd put it in the direction I want it to go. And I would set the die right there inside that square. 
And then I would take my tape and put it on to hold it in place, lift up my stencil, and then it's ready to go through the machine. And that's how you use it to align your dies. So if I did it like that, I would end up with like this, where they're all cut perfectly in the same place on the different layers of my little cardstock. And then you get a thicker, thicker card, but that is a fun way to do it. It's also a fun way to do it if you wanted to make a trifold card. You could mm -hmm. imagine that you could get it on every layer, which is like, um, let me find it real quick. You just have card. to make sure you get them in the right direction. That's all. Yes. Yes. Because you can't flip <laughs> them around yeah. like we did our other ones. So this is an example of how I lined up those layers. This is another looking glass die. This is Flying Girl. And so using the stencil as an alignment tool, was it, you know, I was able to make them all in the same place. So just another little tip about the um, stencil I wanted to share. But I will go ahead and cut out my gold frame and then I'll start building up this little scene. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like with the frame. Now, I, I did keep my um, piece of cardstock at full A2, so I'm gonna trim that down real quick before I start building because I want it to be four by five and a quarter uh, to be so that I have a little border when I put it on my A2 card. And I am also gonna stamp my message before I build up my scene as well, just because I have it really close into the frame. And if I try to do that before or after I put that on there, it might be a little harder to do. So. Oops, I did something wonky with my cutting. Don't do that if you're making a long, make yours nice and perfect. What did I do, Sherry? Look at that, it's so wonky. <laughs> oh, well, the fun of being live. <laughs> I opted to leave mine four and a quarter by five and a half. So I wouldn't worry about wonky. Look at this. Yeah, I should have because I'm I'm having a little <laughs> angle to my card. Oh, that's it's okay. flying away with the bumblebee. Yes. <laughs> that's funny. And I can't find my message. There it is. Now I'm going to do my message without a stamping platform, which is living on the edge. I'm going to do it with an acrylic block. <laughs> Ah, look at Sherry. She's the same. What message are you using, Sherry? I have, you are truly appreciated from, now I can't find it, from this stamp set here. And I'm just, I don't, I have the one that we got in our crop and create kit last time. So I don't think I have the product name on it. And I'm drawing a blank. Here, I'll find it yeah. for you real quick. Oh, here it is. Uh, special thank you. Special thank you. Yes. Yes. I so love we, that set. We will have this coming in our next order for sure. It's a really amazing, versatile thank you message set, uh, set. Yeah, it's great for sending support to people in your community. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is so wonky and crooked right now that I just don't even know what I have straight and what I don't, but... <laughs> I might have to fix this. It's going to drive me crazy. I might have a little bit smaller frame on this. Let's see. It's all good. <laughs> no one's going to know what it's supposed to look like. This is true. This is true. That's one thing. Um, whenever I have a wonky card and I want to measure, I, yeah, I'm not going to do it. You guys can just picture that it would be straight if it was not on a live. <laughs> so, um, but whenever, you know, I need to kind of trim off a little and it's not a perfect A2, five and a half by four and a quarter. The person getting your card is never, ever going to know that or care. So you just do what you need to do, and it's all good. And and even if I sent this card to somebody and it was a little wonky, I think somebody would be so happy just to get a, a handmade card in the mail and something other than bills that they would be totally fine with it. Absolutely. You can send all the wonky, wonky ones to me, Libby. I will be you grateful. <laughs> You'll be my wonky card recipient. There you go. <laughs> well, considering uh, how much I mess up on lives, you might get a lot of cards. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I'm using my precision glue from Hero Arts. I love this liquid glue, but any kind of, um, 
I just find this to be easiest with liquid glue if you're doing it flat because it's a, a small little space that you're trying to, to use adhesive. So. And I'm just lining up kind of the insides of my squares. I don't really care what it looks like out on the outer edge because that's going to be covered by the frame. But I do want to make sure that the inner parts are lined up pretty well because that is what you're actually going to end up seeing. And since it, we were just kind of eyeballing and, and cutting them on those little squares, it's likely that they aren't going to all be a perfect match, but that's okay as long as the inner parts are lined up. And this is a pretty simple card. You could have also done something fun on the background of it if you like to add more layers or textures to your card, but I just think it's pretty on the blue background. It would probably be really easy to, to cut a bunch and just sit in color while you're watching TV and then you've got a whole selection to choose from while you're making your cards if you need something quick. That is true. That's a great idea. Now, one thing I want to point out again, also on this card, you can see this has gone wrong in so many ways, <laughs> but I, I didn't do a good job of eyeballing where my frame would come down. So I'm kind of over my message too much. So if you're making this card at home, at some point, hopefully you didn't just follow me exactly as you're making this, but you would want that to come down a little more so that your frame's not going right on top of your message. So I did that's a where your scraps of white paper come in handy because you can make a sentiment strip. Just put it right on top of it. Yeah. So this is real life stamping right here, man. <laughs> okay. Just looking at this, trying to line it up nice and even uh, around my little scene. All right. There we go. There's my finished one. <laughs> I don't want to show the, <laughs> the wonky one. But you can you can see how that would come together if you were. Through the magic of TV. Yes. Oh, look it. <laughs> so I like this message. Keep your head up and your heart strong um, to go with my sunflowers. And that's from this set that I'm not sure Sherry would have, but it was called Heart Tree Stamp and Cut and has this little tree heart. It says, stay strong. Thank you for being there. And it has a um, die that cuts out some of the little hearts. Like it adds hearts in between the stamped ones, which is really cute. So if anybody was wondering what that is, but that is our finished card. I would put that on a white card base. Oh, there's Sherry's. Looks pretty. Looks less wonky than mine. Good job. You're truly appreciated. <laughs> Yeah, I did more of um, a sea glass color, so yeah, my my um, background was a little bit more on that turquoisey color. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what I'm going to do is I've sure. got your um, crystal clear lacquer pen, and yeah. I think I will put on his wings to Here, give his make, wings a little bit make of shine. Bigger, show up your card really good so people can see it. There we yeah, go. that's so pretty. I love how that turned out. Yeah, uh, trying to get the camera. I think my I think my sentiment bite might be a little bit wonky, but that's okay. And I just use craft paper instead of the gold, um, just to give it a just a little bit more of a rustic look. I probably yeah. should have distressed it with some brown ink, but it's stuck yeah, now. I think it looks great. I love yeah. it. And I popped it. She popped it. Yeah. Got to pop all the things. <laughs> All right. I love it. All right. So one other thing that I want to do before we say goodbye today is run through the rest of these cards. I think you guys would love to see all these examples of cards that you can make with these looking glass. And I'm not sure which ones I've already shown and haven't, but we did talk about the shaker. Show them again. Yeah. Shaker, I shaker. love the shaker idea. I think I'll go bigger for a second. Sure, yeah, I'm going to take off the screen just to show more of these ideas. That is so pretty. I love the coloring on it. Now, I want to mention these. A lot of these are made by my team, not by me. Like this one's Daniel West, if you follow him at all. Um, but um, I don't want to take credit for these beautiful cards. They're made by people on my, my team. Here's one where they put a little monogram in one of those looking glass frames. Here's a fun idea for using the looking glass frame, the ornate frame, as a stencil 
completely unrelated to looking glass, just to show the versatility of it. Here's an example of putting it on that wood block that I mentioned. The, the easel, wood block stamp is what I'm trying to say. Um, here's a really pretty one with the balloons and using some, just a floral stamp. I wouldn't have necessarily thought to put those together or this color scheme, but I just love how it turned out. This is our, our, our artist, Jane, she did a beautiful job. That tone on tone color is just beautiful. Isn't it? So pretty. Now this one I love, she combined, I mentioned that the little um, frame that we used also had a circle version and I love how she put them both together. Can you see the, it's the square and the circle both layered together and then with the little lily pad set. Really cute. Here's another one with the lily pads. And this one, they put little um, enamel dots on there to make it look like bubbles in the water. Another version of the beautiful birds. I love all the little white gel pen accents added on that one. So pretty. Um, this is very similar to what we made today, just on a craft background. Another bird card, but with a, a darker look to it. And I like how they took these same leaves and cut them to be little accents around the outside of their frame as well. Little white and vellum accents. That's a great example that the, these elements don't have to be stuck within the frame. You can use them outside the frame. You can use them in different ways just by snipping them off. Yes. Here's one using the ornate frame and just some cardstock um, with the bees and flowers, a very different look than the coloring we did. Now this one's really cool. I want to show you this. I don't know if it doesn't even come across on the screen, but this artist, this is Lydia Fiedler. She took um, embossing paste and put it on her card and it really looks like a stucco wall. So it looks like this, this framed art is hanging in a gallery with the frame and she drew in that really cool, um, you know, wood floor and then did the, the tie. I wish you guys could see that. It's just not showing up. That's so pretty. And she used ah, it without go. the bumblebee. Yeah, she used it without the bumblebee. She, she cool. omitted a layer. See that texture on the wall? So cool. Here's the little birthday scene again. This one I already showed you. I have more. Wait, there's more. <laughs> now going into some of the um, previous ones that we had, like here are some from the holidays with the ornaments. This is the stars from the sun and stars set. Another one with the um, windmill and tulips. Here's sun and clouds. And then she took a stencil and did some cloud stenciling on the outside of it. Really pretty. Again, the, the, the sun, the moon and stars. I love this one with the fish, a little cute little aquarium look with the fish on this one. This one's stunning. This is Debbie Adams. I'm sorry for the plastic glare on that, but uh, I love this anniversary card with Paris and all these, let me take that out of that, all the um, little um, star shaker bits, sequins, whatever they are, but they look so pretty on there with the, with the Eiffel Tower. Love this looking glass lighthouse. That's stunning. I actually just taught a card with this one over the weekend <laughs> at the Crop on the Cape. So love it. Um, love how she drew a rainbow in with the clouds and rain on this. That's not a looking glass. She just drew that with her marker, but it looks so cute. Here's uh, the girl with balloon, which is another one of my favorites. It's very whimsical. And she combined it with the Eiffel Tower. Love it. This is the Canyon Lands. And that's fun that it's not centered like a lot of the other ones are. It gives a very different look to it. Yes. And she just... This one is Lydia. She just repeated that same message, but then made one of them bold and that did the other ones in gray. I just love that. Really fun. The windmill again. Back into the holiday ones. Here's the little deer scene that I love. I know you guys aren't in the holiday mood right now, but they're still just too pretty not to share. <laughs> and then the clouds. Eiffel Tower and the sun. Um, I love how this one paper pieced the, the sunshine Instead of just having it a yellow sun, they paper pieced it into all kinds of fun colors. And then the windmill and some unexpected colors. All right, more windmills, more sunshine. Don't want to bore you with these, but they're so pretty. Here's another one with the canyon. I love that this could look like the, the canyon lands out in the American West, or it could even look like Africa, um, different regions that that one could look like. Here it is again. 
I think I may have already shown that one. And then one more really pretty Paris scene painted with gold ink and just really pretty. Now, one more thing I want to show is I showed some already with the um, slimline version. Did I already show this one? I can't remember. Paris. Here's another Paris one. Our team loved the Paris when it came out. But I also wanted to show, here's one where we um, did the Girl with Balloon set and then again, use the trees on two sides and then the other part in the center. So it's separating out the different parts of the, the looking glass trio. And then here's one where I made this one and I put looking glass in two of them and then just use some other, these are some other Hero Arts products, some dyes that we have. So you can combine them with things that aren't looking glass related at all to make your little scenes. And then this is completely not looking glass, but I used our alignment tool stencil to draw these three little boxes or ink blend the three little boxes on my card. And so I love using that stencil even way beyond um, just lining up the looking glass. It's fun to create these little vignettes on your card. All right, so that is everything. Let me un-solo this for a second and bring us back up. Actually, I'll even take this one off and it'll just be us on here. <laughs> so um, those were gorgeous, have... Libby. Thank you. But yeah, that was our team making lots of wonderful cards. But uh, any questions from you guys before we sign out today? Or I hope you have some ideas for these looking glass dies. And I just love them. I think they're so fun to build these little scenes with. Absolutely. Well, we'll uh, hopefully we'll be keeping them on making them and uh, uh, all of you guys can post your creations and we love to see them and we'll keep on bringing these guys in if you guys keep loving them because, you know, it, it's the standard case where it's one for me and two for the store, one for me and two for the store. <laughs> I'm glad you love them too. <laughs> so, yes, they are, they are so much fun to play with. All right. Well, I'm not seeing too many more questions. But thank you so much, Libby, for joining yeah. us today. I really enjoyed spending the time with you. I wish we were closer. We could craft together more often. So maybe when the world gets a little bit better, we can have you up for a visit. That would be so awesome. But, I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> All well, right. Well, thanks for having me, Sherry. I love being here. And I'm honored that you wanted me to demo on your page. So thank you so much. And thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Have Everybody. a great weekend, everyone. Or not weekend. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> You can tell what kind of day it's been. So, yeah, I feel you there, Libby. Have a great evening, everyone. And don't forget, right here on this Facebook page, Darlene's going to be playing with our new Nifty 50 uh, embossing trio. So tune in tonight at 8 for that. Great. Bye, guys.